right, man. I seen Tim Bradley did an interview with Sean Tazel. <clears throat> he went in on uh, Javante Davis and said Javante Davis will get exposed if he fights the right guy, right, in due time. Um, he says what PBC and they doing with Javante is smart um, for the most part. Um, he said when the going get tough and Tank got to strap his nuts home, he going to get exposed. Um and that's why they, they hide and tank and they keep him away from other top fighters. Um, he said he'd been around boxing a long time and he know uh, what that looked like. And me too. <laughs> he's had been fighting my whole life. And I damn near been watching boxing my whole life. And he's absolutely right on that. The way they move and take is some is, is they moving him like a guy with a major deficiency. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's just what it is. They move him, moving him. Like a guy with a major deficiency. I don't know if it's a chin. I don't know if it's conditioning. But they're protecting him at all costs. And, you know, a lot of other PBC fighters have been protected. But, you know, at some point, a lot of them guys, you know, I think their ego get to them where they veer off the path. Maybe, uh, excuse me, Adrian Broner wanted to veer off the path. The Al half woman wanted to jump in there with Madonna and prove. And did prove that he's a tough, tough SOB. Um... Remember Mayweather said that he lost, he should just stick to our plan. Um, whether it's Deontay Wilder, you know, wanting to get back in there with Tyson Fury after the rematch against Al Heyman and PBC Wishes and could have just went another way, especially when Fury went another way. You know, Errol Spence went off the game plan when he was supposed to get served up to Canelo and he wanted to fight Terrence Crawford. So a lot, a lot of that, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the ego get in the way. With a lot of these guys, and they they hear what the fans say, and you ducking this, and you ducking that, you ain't about this, you ain't hoo doo hoo bumping up, you uh, you ain't about it, about it, uh, you know what I'm saying? And you know they hear they hear what people be saying, especially on social media. You gotta understand these fighters, you know, um, they only can go to one place to really hear themselves to get talked about. You know, they got rid of Max on boxing, so they come to the internet, they hear what everybody got to say. You know what I'm saying? You will see fighters, you say something, and they look at you a certain way, you know, and, he, and they sensitive about it, you know, because it's public criticism, you know, and they hear what people say about them and they get to them. But with Bradley saying they are moving Javante Davis like a fighter that that's uh that's that's that's, that's protected. He's 29 years old. He just turned 29 like a week ago. He's 29 years old. You know, and ain't, you know, he avoided Lomachenko. You know what I'm saying? He avoided, he avoided Devin Haney, avoiding Shakira Stevenson, avoiding Tiafima Lopez. You know, you know, one one can say, well, he was at 40, avoiding Regis Progress, avoided Josh Taylor, made some comments, said he would have did this, that, and the third, and didn't do it. And then I think what that, ultimately what took the cake is he gets in the ring with Ryan Garcia and he puts a catch weight and rehydration clause on Ryan Garcia after he had already fought at 140. If you didn't think Tank Davis and they didn't, they didn't have any confidence in Tank Davis, then you should have knew now. You know, and at least Tim Bradley got the ball to, to speak up, speak up on it because it's, it's 100 percent true. You know, and they hide behind like Sean Dezel say, yeah, you know, um, you know what they're going to say. They're going to say it's the business and it's all deflection. And what do the fans say? Well, you know, he don't bring nothing to the table. This, that. Well, shit, what did Esau Cruz bring to the table? What did the 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 the, uh, the guy he fought in Baltimore bring to the table? That's bullshit. That's bullshit. When you're talking about, oh, he don't bring nothing to the table, you know, they think they deserve this and they deserve, man, that's deflection. All they doing is hurting Tank in the long run. They prolonging the, the, the inevitable. He ain't gonna never fight nobody. So Shakira Stevenson, you know, wasting his 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 time and money, you know, uh, or wasting his time talking about Tank Davis, De Devin Haney, wasting his time talking about Tank Davis. Tank Davis ain't got shit to say when fight when when they know when when they number space and opportunity. But when fight sign, he got something to say. He goofy. The way he his, he moving is a goofy ass nigga, man. And it wouldn't get no validity to it if he if you know if he didn't have the talent to be great. Or if he just shut the fuck up and ducked in peace like Leo Santa Cruz, you ain't got to trip on it. But he sit here and he he beat his chest like he the top dog and then he go fight little motherfuckers. And then when he fights somebody that's a name like Ryan Garcia, you you hamper Ryan Garcia. 
you hamper them. So don't don't give us that bullshit. And Tim Bradley is 100% right. And what's going to happen with Tank Davis? He going to fight somebody that can walk and chew bubble gum, and he, he going to lose. I'm telling you. He going because he ain't going to fight nobody. He going to lose to somebody that people didn't see coming. I'm telling you. And people say, well, he can punch so hard. Yeah, you can knock guys out that you fight. And what happened when you hit somebody and they hit your ass back? He ain't been in one of them fights yet. He ain't been in one of those fights yet. He moving just like Mayweather, you know, moved when he became Money Mayweather, a punk. Moving like a punk. Niggas ain't got no pride over there, bro. Mayweather, the best fighter in the world, walking around with 10 security guards. For real. And you got some people that just don't want to talk around it because Tank black and they want to give him a pass because he black. Some people want to give him a pass because he with PBC and all that shit. Motherfucker's about to be 30 years old. Nigga been pro forever and ain't fought nobody. Come on. And ain't fought a damn soul. At least Martin fought Tom, Tom, Tommy Hearns. He ain't fought the Tommy Hearns that Martin fought in the 90s. And Ganu got a better resume than Tank Davis do right now. No cap. And Ganu got a better resume than Tank Davis do right now. <laughs> You know, but, you know, I was listening to the interview and everything Tim Bradley said was right. And what Shakira Stevenson said, well, Tank told me that he was going to fight nobody and just get to the bag. And I keep telling y'all money can't be y'all purpose, bro. I always tell y'all that's not a purpose. And your purpose can be where I want to, you know, provide a better family for my life, for my family, better life for my family. When your purpose is, is driven by money, bro, you will never be fulfilled. <clears throat> You will never be fulfilled. Because then I'll get money to get the hoes. Or I'll get money to, to buy a house, man, and material things. When you chasing your purpose, you chasing something greater. You know, you can say, well, you know, I'm chasing to be the best, you know, you know, CEO out there. Or I want to be the greatest basketball player out there. Or I want to be the best man that I can be. And, you know, your purpose got to be things like that. When it's just monetary, dude. Yeah, you can say, I want to be out of the best spiritual place you know, I want to be in. That could be a purpose. You know what I'm saying? You know, my purpose is to go buy a Charger. My purpose is to get a Ferrari. My purpose, man, is... you can never be fulfilled doing that. And you see how these dudes, they purpose in boxing is to make money and how it's destroyed the sport. And then you see they, you know, they get the money and they getting the money, but then they still don't have fulfillment. Motherfuckers still say they ain't fought nobody. You fighting bums or you ain't did this and you ain't do that. And they let they let these the media and the fans hype them up. They let them pump pump it up. They let them pump their head up. And they go in there thinking they bigger and better than what they are, knowing they've been manufactured like a Timberland boot. And they get in there and they go, they go to another ninja's block, they get whooped on, and then they don't want to fight no more. Then they want to take a year or two off. And that money they was getting, the money get funny when it stopped coming in. Now they gotta fight for the money. Now they didn't blew up and weighed and they didn't took a year or two off, a year and a half off. Now they gotta cut the weight to get back down and they come and look like trash. Now they don't look the same. Now he look like booty, 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 butt cheeks. Yo, ego get to you, bro. I remember my friend was beefing with this dude in the sixth grade. And he was smaller than this dude named Trevor. And, um, you know, this this is part of life. You got to mind, you got to, you know, learn to mind your business. So I'm like, man, I'm about to fight my dog. You know, and I stepped in, me and Trevor got, it was a Friday, it was a Friday, we was about to get on the bus and go home for the weekend. It actually was the best time to do so. We, you know, we square up, whatever. I slipped, Trevor, catch me with a, with a right, pow, right on my head. 
But as I slip, I land the haymaker on this nigga. I bust that nigga lip off. His lip split right open, fight over with one punch. He threw a punch, I threw a punch. But the difference was, my, my punch split his fucking bottom lip clean open. Clean open. And that's thing you know, they grabbed, they, they grabbed us, whatever. I slipped away, got on the bus, came. I knew I was going to get suspended on Monday. We didn't get suspended. And the funny thing is, the next year, we set up the same, seventh grade year, we set up the same table. And when niggas like, didn't y'all fight last year? I'm like, yeah. And he was like, I beat your ass. I said, nigga, I beat your ass, nigga. We could do it again and again. I like, we could run that shit again, you know. You the one that had your mouth busted open, nigga, and ran off. He was like, he couldn't even say nothing. This shit was, it's funny. Like, we laughed about it after a while. This shit was funny, though. Like, you know, you be angry and beefing with people, dog. Like, what's funny thing is, you can be angry and, and beef with dudes, and after a while, you know, it is what it is. A lot of times, the people that you beef with and that angry with you, a lot of times, y'all got a lot of shit in common. But you notice with a lot of black people, before I get off, it's a lot of jealousy. It's a lot of embedded hatred, in, you know, since we've been over in this country. And sometimes niggas look at you, they can't even tell you why they don't like you. They don't like you. But, you know, that is what it is, man. But let me know what you girls and guys think. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon button. Hit all the notifications. Increase your chance. Get notifications. We go live. We drop video. Um, you know, uh... Hit the link tree. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Link tree, the first link in the description. Appreciate the love support. Let me know what you girls and guys think. Comment section. Don't forget to check my new channel out, Free Game 89, FR33 Game 89. And check out my Detroit channel, Mercy Sports Talk. Both links in the link tree in the description. Peace.